Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand hot electron effect or hot Courier effect. In the previous clip, we have seen a few short channel effects, velocity saturation, mobility degradation, and so on and so forth. In this clip, we are going to focus our attention to understand what is hot electron effect or hot Courier effect. We know that there are two electric fields in MOSFET. One is E-lateral. We have seen that which is given by VDS by L drain to source voltage upon the length of the channel and the other one is E vertical which is given by VGS by TOX. Now we have also seen scaling and two different types of scaling constant field scaling and constant voltage scaling. We saw its advantages disadvantages for both of them. Now let's presume that we have done constant voltage scaling means my voltages are not scaled down whereas all my other dimensions or features are scaled down except for the voltages. If that happens let's see what's happening for E-lateral. E-lateral because VDS is not scaled down is going to be VDS upon L dash which is L by S because of the scaling L dash is equal to L by S and that shows that E-lateral will increase. We also know that when my VDS is greater than VDSAT, my channel is pinched off and if I keep on increasing my v VDS further, my channel keeps on shifting towards the left in saturation region, correct? Shifts towards the left. That means my channel length is effectively reduced. So length is reduced here further. This also will lead to an increase in E-lateral. So what we are trying to understand here is that presuming that our transistor is operating in the saturation region, we have deployed a voltage scaling, constant voltage scaling technique in which my voltages are not scaled down. We see that our E-lateral, which is VDS by L, increases. In this case, technically, as VDS is increasing, length is getting reduced, so the factor might get even out. But because length is scaled down by a factor of S, E-lateral still increases and VDS is kept constant it's not scaled down. Now in the previous clip we have also seen that the drift velocity is given by mobility into E-lateral. We have seen this while we studied velocity saturation. This tells me that as E-lateral keeps on increasing, my drift velocity of my electrons will keep on increasing. Now when the velocity of the electrons is increased means well the electrons are moving with very high velocity we know that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to velocity. So my kinetic energy of this electrons or this carriers would increase drastically. When the kinetic energy of this electrons increase drastically what's going to happen is they will become hot and hence this electrons are called as hot electrons. So let's understand quickly. Let's recap what I just said. When VDS is increasing, my E-lateral is increasing. When I say E-lateral is increasing, the electric field towards the drain is increasing. When the electric field towards the drain is increasing, we just said that my velocity increases, drift velocity. We also saw the relation that VD was equal to mu into E-lateral. So drift velocity increase. We know that drift velocity is directly proportional to kinetic energy. Correct? We have done this in our lower classes, right? So when velocity increases, kinetic energy tends to increase and this kinetic energy with which the electrons are moving will make the electrons quite hot because it's a huge kinetic energy and these are nothing but hot electrons. Now what is happening is this hot electrons are moving towards the drain with a very high energy because the electric field towards the drain is high and they will undergo a phenomena at this point at the juncture or at the interface a phenomena called as impact ionization. Let's understand what is impact ionization. Why I have taken this specific point here is because the electric field would be highest at that particular point. So impact ionization is a process in a material by which one energetic charge carrier can lose energy by the creation of other charge carriers. We'll quickly understand this. Right now what we need to understand is impact ionization is some sort of a process 
in which one energetic charge carrier in this case electrons are very highly charged right so something this electrons will do and that what they are going to do is they will lose their own energy by the creation of other charge carriers so in semiconductors an electron or a hole with enough kinetic energy which is to be the case right now with us can knock a bound electron out of its bound state what does this mean if an electron is moving with very high kinetic energy it can knock out an electron from its current state and put it into another state for example i have shown here this is the electron with very high kinetic energy it is knocking down this electron one which is in valence band to conduction band due to impact ionization and this will lead to the absence of electron in the valence band which is nothing but the presence of hole or an electron hole pair is generated so this electron which moved here due to impact ionization from valence band to conduction band will lead to the absence of electron which is nothing but an hole or an electron hole pair is generated now because there are so many of these electrons which are moving with such high energy lot of these electrons will transfer their energy to the electrons in the valence band and move them from valence band to conduction band leaving behind a lot of electron hole pairs the holes which are going to be the p type will go back to the p substrate which will lead to a substrate current which is technically not desirable however the electrons will move towards the oxide layer now see an interesting thing which is happening we know that there is another electric field also which is present which is nothing but e vertical which is again given by vgs by tox again if we presume that vgs is not scaled down and tox is then e vertical is also increasing right because t dash ox is equal to s times tox now when e vertical is also increasing it will try to pull the electrons towards itself here we have seen that the electrons because of impact ionization electron hole pairs are created holes will move towards the substrate leading to substrate current the electrons will move towards the oxide and because of the high electric field lot of electrons will move towards the gate but there will be some electrons which will get trapped into this oxide and here is a very interesting thing which will be using as a concept for flash memories and eproms now when this electrons get trapped into this oxide what's technically going to happen is suppose this is my mos this is my oxide this is my metal now there are some electrons which are getting trapped here correct so now the next time when you apply your threshold voltage to turn your transistor on or to form your channel this threshold voltage has to take into consideration some amount of voltage to overcome this negative charge which is getting developed on the sio2 layer it will have to overcome this and then only the transistor can turn on so technically a device which was turning on for a low threshold voltage now will require a high threshold voltage to turn on and this carriers or this electrons which move into the oxide layer will affect the overall characteristics the value of the currents also in your device this concept will be studying in details which is nothing but a floating gate concept in that we add on an additional gate but it is very similar for you to understand right now that when the charge is getting trapped into the oxide layer you have to take into the equation of the threshold voltage the value to overcome that charge and hence your threshold voltage will increase and your device characteristics will change and in this case for the same threshold voltage which your transistor was turning on now will turn on with a higher threshold voltage and overall your value of id will reduce that means if id is reducing your resistance is increasing your resistance is increasing in layman's language delay is equal to r into the load capacitance your resistance was increasing means your delay is increasing and your speed is becoming slow this is one of the short channel effect hot carrier effect or hot electron effect hope you have followed it stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much